Racing is my life and it has been ever since I first had the opportunity to get behind the wheel. Racing can sometimes have a bit of a negative reputation as it's not always viewed as the most sustainable type of sport. Extreme E wasn't really something that was ever on my radar. I didn't really imagine myself to be end up here driving an EV vehicle. This, this type of racing never even existed when I started motorsport. It's been a huge learning experience, however, both on and off the track. The site that we're racing on this weekend is an old coal mine that will soon be converted to a pump storage hydropower plant. My life has always been about racing but this series gives us the opportunity to learn more, highlight our impact and make a difference for the future. So while we're here in Scotland for the race weekend, E.ON have invited me out to Stevens Croft Power Plant to check out what they do here and how they make renewable energy. Stevens Croft Biomass Plant is a wood burning power station. The fuel source that you can see here is only part of the fuel diet that we get, so roundwood is a very small component. Um, this would get chipped to provide a stable, homogenous fuel blend, uh, one that we can burn nicely to make some uh, green, renewable, sustainable energy for the local area. Other products within there are forest residue, for example. We're surrounded by a few sawmills here. They're very good to us because anything that sawmill can't use, we take and we have a fuel supplier next door who blends the fuel, uh, sends it to us, we burn it. The energy that we produce here is green, it's sustainable, it's renewable and there's a lot of power going on there, 48 <laughs> megawatts. So um, to put it in context, what, what would that power, how long, how much, what, would that, what does that mean in I my terms? put that in context for you. <laughs> yeah. So you drive an extreme car. Yes. If you can imagine having 120 of your cars on yeah. the start line, and in that one instant when you floor it, yeah. that is the equivalent of the power that we're giving out instantaneously yeah, at any right. one time. You That'd have. be an interesting race, 120. I would love to put some <laughs> wheels on a steering wheel on our turbine and generator and bang 48 megawatts out, and, and I'll take you on, I'm joking. <laughs> Throughout my time with Extreme E, I've learned so much about our carbon impact on the world. Climate change is one of the biggest threats facing Scotland's environment, as rising temperatures and changing weather patterns lead to habitat loss and reduced species distribution. This plant has been here for about 15 years now, so we were at the very forefront of renewable sources of energy. If we step back to what Stevens Croft means in terms of uh, how is this process renewable, how is it sustainable, the fuel that we do get, most of it is waste wood. So a lot of the components don't have any other life that would uh, alternatively go to landfill. So we're avoiding landfill. When we look at the round wood that we do chip, um, a small percentage into each batch of fuel, that is often referred to as carbon neutral because the fuel when it's burning and releasing its energy releases only a comparable amount of carbon um, as the plants absorb when they're growing. So that provides the renewable aspect and we're, of course we're, we're getting the maximum out of a natural product. I've learned that there are so many ways we can harness renewable energy, whether that's wind, solar, hydro, or even lesser known forms like biomass fuel. It's really interesting as well to think of how many different ways we can generate energy. And sometimes it's about thinking a little bit outside the square and seeing what we've already got and how we can reuse and create yeah. less waste as well. And it's not just one or two things are the solution to renewable energy. It's, it's a whole lot of things. One of the things that is, that's really, really important is an understanding that solar itself or wind itself will not provide a stable grid network in a country. You need a balanced portfolio of technologies. So you need the renewables, but you also need inertia on the grid. And inertia comes from large rotating plant, similar to what we have here with the turbine and the generator. It means that the grid can ride through small variances or changes yeah. in the frequency. And what that does is protect the grid from dropping off. So the balanced portfolio of energy solutions will never go away. The need for that has to be there. There's not one solution, it's a combination of solutions. Being part of Extreme E and learning more about what we can do to fight climate change has certainly made me make some changes in my personal life at home, but what are some of the ideas that other people following along can, can also make? Customers can, for example, look to install solar panels on their roof. They can look to install 
uh, ground and air-source heat pumps. The technology is advancing to such an extent, perhaps customers may have some EVs, yeah. so that push to keep these uh, new solutions being developed and then being rolled out to domestic customers and business customers, um, that will never end. There's still so much more I can do to work towards a more sustainable future, but if I can continue to take steps forward, like through EV racing and small changes in my everyday life, then that's still progress. Racing at the Glen McGlock Hydro Project is a perfect continuation of all the work that we've been doing with Extreme E. I've been able to learn so much and see change with my own eyes through Extreme E, the legacy programs, and also the Stevens Croft power plant. There are so many people in the racing community. If we all made small changes, the difference we could make collectively would be huge. My name is Molly Taylor and I'm taking action for climate.